Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay Ner Chuck. And this, my friends, is the Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And this is shaping up to be a epic EPIC episode because we're going to talk about several different things that in the 500 plus episodes of Wine Library TV, we have not addressed properly, appropriately. So I'm extremely excited to be here in Bordeaux tasting these wines and the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is what we're doing which is a 20 year look back at the 88 Bordeaux and we've got three very, very special wines with us today that we're going to be tasting through. Uh, the Costa Estronal 88, the Chateau Margaux 88 and the Chateau La Torre 88. Uh, a great vintage, uh, Wacky World Series, right? Was that when the earthquake happened? 88? I think. No? That was 89, wasn't it? That was 88 was Dodgers. Oh, 88. I do not believe what I did. That one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so um, I'm really excited about this because there's a couple of factors I want to talk about. First and foremost, cellaring. Cellaring old wine is so imperative. I mean, with the prices that we are paying, especially for the current releases of wines of this nature, you wouldn't buy a million dollar antique car and leave it in the driveway, right? You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't buy an antique painting and leave it outside. So why would you spend thousands upon tens of thousands of dollars and not properly store them? The first thing that completely grabbed Ian's attention as he opened it up, I should call it like it is. Ian, I'm gonna need some great zoom in action here. I know you're gonna have to play around with it. Let's see if you got the skills that Mott does. Um, Is that these corks are incredible. Absolutely incredible corks. And that, right away, was a telltale sign that these wines were stored immaculately. Very imperative. I just would boggle my mind to spend a collective thousand dollars on these three bottles of wine and then open up a situation where the corks are wet. So reputable uh, producers buying from, and especially for you retailers out there, you know who I know you watch the show, I appreciate it, hey? Um, You know, you need to really consider who you're buying your wines from because at the end of the day, you're selling it to your consumer. They don't care who you bought it from in France or what local distributor. You're the person with that direct connection. So I, I would highly recommend looking at the people you're buying it from because that's imperative to us when we look at old Bordeaux as well. Which makes it difficult because the people that do have it in proper conditions, because it's darn expensive, and you know what? Air conditioning is becoming more expensive every day, um, are spending a lot more money. So a lot of times price becomes a factor. I think that's something you can really think about when you get into this situation. And it's something that I've become more and more aware of in time. Now number two, and this to me, believe it or not, storage is very, I'm very passionate about storing products, but I'm even more passionate about what I'm about to talk to you about. I always talk about trust your own palate. Don't listen to me. I love it, great. Now, if you've watched 500 shows, we have a similar palate, maybe you take a gamble. And that's what I call it, still a gamble, because every palate is like a thumbprint. It's different. This is a situation where we are looking at three wines that the press has gone in different directions with. For example, my friends, the first one we'll be tasting today is the 1988 Costa Estronal. This is 87 points, Robert Parker, but 95 points, Wine Spectator. Big difference, 130 bones. Number two, Chateau Margaux, 1988. 88 points, Robert Parker, and 95 points, Wine Spectator. Again, $285 retail, about, right now. We're gonna link it up, Mott, even though you're not here, to allow you guys to buy these. We don't have them currently in stock, but we'll show you where you can buy them. And number three, before you say Robert Parker is down and the spectator's up, oh, this makes sense. Oh, really? Because Robert Parker is 91 points on the Chateau Latour, but the wine spectator comes in at 87 points. And this is a $300 bottle of wine. So, for all of you that are buying wine on Gospel of Ratings, what does this indicate to you? We haven't even brought out Jancis Robinson, Decanter, so many other authorities out there and analyzed theirs. Everybody looks at different things. Everybody's got a different palette and you need to keep that in mind and that's what we stress in case try different things. And included in trying different things is an opportunity to go out and find older Bordeaux. I don't know about you, but when I see 07 first growths, which is a nice solid vintage, actually, by the way, a little side note, a little bit better than I think we're thinking or we're reading right now. But that's another story for another day. When I look at first growths and super seconds at prices less than upon Premier in Bordeaux now and with 20 years of bottle age, I think there's opportunity out there. And I think we are in a golden era of the price correction of Bordeaux where some of the older vintages, ones that are not as famed but are extremely good, like an 88, like an 89, 
like an 86, like an 83, crazy deals in 83, like a 94, like a 2004, like a 98 is still, especially right bank. So there's buys out there as Bordeaux continues to change its dynamic of worldwide pricing. So I'm very excited about all these factors, selling imperative, clearly scoring, can't be taken as gospel, right? These are the two players in America going in different directions. So let's jump into them. Let me add a third perspective for you today on the Thunder. The first one, the 88, cost astronaut. Let's give it a sniffy sniff, because that's what we do. Now we did the 2005 um, on the show, and here's the 88 coming in much more mature. A little bit of green herbaceous components. I like the black tea component. If you love tea, and don't be surprised if I start tea library TV soon because I'm becoming more and more passionate every day about hot tea and the terroir and the nuances of tea. It's a new passion of mine. That's picking up quite a bit as I'm picking up with older Bordeaux. I get a very distinct black tea component on the nose. I also get a little bit of a sour cherry and a little bit of a rusted nail. Maybe if you're like, you know, you built a shed outside, go outside and find a nail. Smell that, a little rusted nail. I get a little bit of that component on this as well. Let's give it a whirl. The alcohol rides on me a little bit. I still get a little heat. The tans are pretty bitter and the wine is a little bit in the mid palate, kind of dull. Perfect storaging, so I'm gonna call these as I see them because I feel very comfortable that these are the prime examples of where the wine is right now. Though you do have bottle variation as you start getting into the older vintages. I get almost like, believe it or not, a tomato component. Kind of a weird little thing and a lot of people are not gonna bring technicalities and think that we have some flaws with the wine. We don't, it's just a secondary little flavor I'm picking up on. Again, a little bit of beef jerky on the flavor, which is kind of neat. Um, but driven clearly by this sour cherry component, the heat is probably the ultimate reason that I'm kind of meh about the Costa Estonal. I think it's a solid effort. I think it's romantic. I think it's got some class. It's always fun to drink older Bordeaux for my palate in general because it's a totally different sensation than drinking these young efforts of all the wines that I get to normally drink, for example, on the Thunder Show or when I'm tasting day to day. Um, special occasions when you get to go a little older, always fun for the palate. But all in all, this effort on my scale, you know, is an 89 plus point wine. So I do lean a little bit more towards Parker on this one. Again, don't forget, let me just rephrase this because I'm being wrong. When the heck did these guys even rate this wine? Right? Take that into play, my friends, as Ian shakes his head so I know I made a good point. I mean, they probably review these. I'm going to check on the website now. I don't know, 15 years ago? Things evolved. I'm sure Par Parker's done a good job of retrospecting. Spectator does too, a 10-year retro, a lot of times. So we're doing our own little 20-year retro. We'll start doing that. So we'll have fun next year tasting... Uh, you know, some of the 89s, which were a lot of fun. Um, all in all, a solid effort. I think a little bit overpriced in the scheme of things. I would not recommend you going out and running out and buying this wine, but a nice effort all in all. Let's move on to the 88 Chateau Margaux. Little we'll zoom in. Uh, you don't have a quick trip like mine. Now you probably over zoomed, right? No. You good? <laughs> I'm good. All right. It's blinking, the, yeah. the battery. Are we okay? Is it mm -hmm. powering up? Because I get worried when I see that. It's not a battery. Okay, good. Anyway, it's plugged in. let's go into the uh, 89 Margot. Let's give it a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Good fruit. Little sour cherry. Very clean on the nose. You worried about it? Okay. It says four minutes in the upper right corner on I'll something. Go fast. Is it plugged in? Uh huh. You sure? Positive. Yeah. It's plugged? Uh huh. And it's charged. Right technical difficulties live in Bordeaux. Okay, I'll just keep going. It's fine. We should be fine. I'm going to have to speed taste a little bit, or we'll cut it short and do a two-part series for you vaniacs out there as we go black in Bordeaux. Um, the 89 Chateau Margaux. A little spearmint, a little peppermint action on the nose. A little dark cherry. Um, kind of like it quite a bit. Um, elegant fruit kind of coming through. I also get a little bit of a mulberry kind of flavor on the nose, which I'm liking quite a bit. Tell me if it goes to three minutes, Ian. Goes to three minutes. Got it. We're going to probably have to do a two-part series for you out there, Vaniacs, if this goes black. Anyway, back to the focus, because I don't want to take away the thunder. Um, a little bit of like a, a, a spearminty, minty kind of thing going on here on the Margot. Remember, 88 Parker, 95 Wine Spectator. Let's give it a whirl. Very 
great polish. Mm, I like this sepper. Really interesting strawberries. Like little, little young strawberries coming through on the flavor profile. I get a little hint of um, a little bark, a little tree bark. You get a little bit of that wood coming through in this wine for sure. I like the elegance. I like the Asian spice component. A little paprika action. A little rosemary coming through in this wine, which I like quite a bit. But all in all, end of the day, these little strawberries are really taking it home for me. Nice long finish, good brightness of fruit, solid complexity, a very complex, thoughtful wine with dark, dark fruits. Um, I really like the length. Wow, I'm really impressed with this underlining, like elderberry kind of thing going on in the finish. Jammy, yet not over the top. I mean, this is an elegance vintage in Bordeaux. Bordeaux is typically more elegant than most wines from around the world. So you're dealing with polish and class. Kind of like this environment is much more than maybe the white backboard that I have in the back. This, you know, this is kind of perfect. This wine is this room in my palate. I like this. This is where I'm going to go a little more with the wine spectator. To me, this is a 93 point wine. I love the elegance. 285 bones. That's a lot of cash. I get it. But um, it's extremely well made. Some really good polish. Um, dark, dark, inky flavors on the mid-palate. Not to be confused with at all with what's currently dark and inky out there. A great wine, 93 points, I honestly think can be cellared for another five to 10 years. And if you're balling like P. Diddy, this is definitely a wine you want to go and seek out. A tremendous effort. Killer. This is why Bordeaux ages so beautifully. All right, we're gonna move into the Latour, which I think could cut out on us, but I'll just do my thing, and we'll edit it out and do it if we have to do it again. 88 Chateau Latour, great, great vintage wine, 91 points Robert Parker, 87 points Wine Spectator, 300 US dollars currently on the scene. Let's see what's going on here. Let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. Now this is the reverse, this is where Parker's a little higher. That sucked. And we're back! Ian and Pierre Antoine went on the street and got Lexar. Lexar saved our lives so we can finish this show for you. But it's only got one gig, so I don't know if we're gonna get the third episode I wanted to tape today. Nonetheless, we are moving on. We did the first two wines. We're now moving on to the 88 Chateau La Tour, uh, which again, I don't know if we zoomed in before, but no, we didn't. We're, going, we're right into the editing. Um, 91 points Robert Parker, 87 points Wine Spectator, 300 US bones. So again, the flip over here. This is where Parker had scored the wine higher than the Spectator as we had the total opposite of the other two. So these are gonna go. Anyway, let's give this wine a sniffy sniff. Very interesting nose. Um, you know, it's a little bit of like a, a, a black raspberry. Not a red raspberry, like we did in episode 147 when I discovered black raspberries. A black raspberry component on the nose nose considering actually in comparison to the other two wines which is quite interesting it means it's maybe got a little bit more time to go there's a little bit of a leather thing going on here on this wine almost like uh, your baseball mitt in left field but like an old one like you had to use your older brother's baseball mitt like that like I had well I didn't have an older brother but I had to like hand me down somewhere I bought you know just a little bit of a leather component to the nose as well which I find very intriguing Guess I'm gonna have to drink this one because I can't find the spit bucket anymore either. <laughs> I like how it's gonna edit and everything's gonna be like a different scene. We finally had to edit. Yeah. Finally, not a straight through. See what happens when Mott's not here? Thanks, Ian. Hey, it's <laughs> not my fault. Just kidding. Also, a little hint of vegetal components before I get into the final thing. A little bit of a bell pepper kind of thing. Oh, it's fine. A mic? No mic, it's fine. They're worried about the back end scenery. They obviously haven't seen Wine Library TV when the phones got off and when my, my, I spilled stuff on myself. Very dry in comparison to the other two. Um, has a medium to full body component. There's also an elegance here, but I gotta tell you, not as much as I found in the Margot. Um, well made, good structure, still youthful in a lot of ways. The rounded out edges of the palette I find to be a little bit awkward and a little bit tight, which bothers me a little bit. Let me give it one more whirl. I get a roasted red pepper component on the mid palette, which I'm kind of appealing to. I like that. 
um, very, very bone dry, dramatically drier than the last two wines. A little bit too much wood, in my opinion. It's not the ah, oak monster that we see a lot of times in other places of the world, but it's clearly evident. We get a little tree bark, bark. Again, that leather component is a fascinating part of this wine. I think this, again, unbelievable. I mean, I'm not sure I have 2005 Bordeaux that have you know corks this clean. So I find this to definitely be a, a good example of where this wine is. Um, let me give it one more shot. The best of the three on the initial attack. Initially, I think this wine is going to be incredible. It, it falls off. I call this a cliff wine. You know, it kind of goes, and it takes a little bit of a dip and gets a little bit short. Thank you. That's where I was going. On the finish. So ultimately, a very solid bottle of wine. Very well, well made. To me, not the polish and just overall roundness and exceptionalness of the Margot. Better than the Casa de I'm going to go with 90 plus points on this wine. I like it a lot. I think it's very solid. Again, 300 bones, you got to decide for yourself. But if you want to ball and impress the ladies like Ian likes to, uh, you know, having a Latour 300 bones is a kind of fair price these days. A good bottle of wine, I think, is in a very nice place of drinking. So if you're sitting with any 88 Latour, I think nice, now would be a nice time to pop it, see what it's doing. The Margot clearly wins the 88 retrospective for me, with Latour slightly sleeping out the uh, Casta Estanal. Now, that being said, ratings, right? Here you go. You had the spectator, you had Parker. My opinions all over different places. I kind of fell in between, it looks like, of them because they were a little bit more extreme than each other. Um, but a really phenomenal opportunity to go back and look at wines. I want to do more of looking back at older wines on the Thunder Show. So when we travel and have these opportunities especially, we're going to try to seize them for you. Remember, trust your own palate. Try different things. But most of all, when you share those wines, share it with somebody you love because that's what wine does. It brings people together. Question of the day, what is the finest bottle of mature Bordeaux you've ever had? Nothing before, I hate to say this, but nothing before 1995 will be accepted. I know a lot of you are younger and haven't had a lot of experience, so we'll allow 95 and back. Because you, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.